Hello and welcome to XARC. This presentation is titled One in the Same, an Experimental Study of the Effects of Trampling on Bone Flakes by myself, Victoria Gordon, and Dr. Jerome Reynard. This paper aimed to determine the effects that trampling has on experimentally produced bone flakes. The research questions include, what are the effects of trampling on bone flakes? Does trampling of bone flakes create the same patterns found on flakes that have been retouched? And does trampling create similar patterns on bone flakes that have been utilised? The experiment began by butchering two long bones from a cow. This was done using a variety of hammer stones, as you see here. The flakes produced were boiled and cleaned to remove any meat and tissue. The flakes were then separated into three groups, those to be used for cutting, those to be used for scraping, and those that would remain unutilised. These categories were determined by the shape and sharpness of the bone flake. Those that were particularly sharp and narrow were used for cutting. Flakes that had flatter edges and a better grip were used for scraping. And those that did not fit these categories were grouped into the unutilised pile. The bones were then photographed using an Olympus SZ100 microscope. Enough flakes were produced to have 15 within each sediment pit, five for each of the categories and one extra. This extra bone, as well as an older, more brittle bone flake, were used to create retouched edges, once again using a hammer stone. This was done for the purpose of comparing retouched edges or notches to those potentially found on trampled flakes created from the experiment. The arrow and circle here indicate the areas that have been notched. The next part of the experiment involved the utilisation of the flakes. Those set aside for scraping were used to scrape wood until the edges became blunt. The same was done for cutting, where two types of beef was used, a soft shin and a harder brisket. Although it wasn't relevant to the project, I noted the amount of times each flake was used to cut or scrape before they became blunt, something that may be relevant to further experiments or projects. The flakes were then photographed again using the Olympus SZ100 microscope to analyse any differences between the original bone and the bone after the process of utilisation. The trampling pits were then dug and a plastic tarp was used to line the bottom and the sides. Pit 1 here is beach sand. Pit 2 is coarse sand, also described as river sand. Pit 3 is pea-sized gravel and pit 4 is a clay sediment. Each of the pits were filled halfway before the utilised and unutilised bone flakes were added. The pits were then filled, and each pit was trampled for 10 minutes a day over a period of 30 days. The trampling involved walking, jumping and stomping. The pits were covered with more plastic tarp between trampling sessions to make sure the site was not compromised in any way. This also means that it was kept dry from rain. Once the flakes were removed from the sediments, they were analysed once more with the microscope. Having 60 flakes in total, 15 per sediment, each flake was photographed roughly 20 times per step, resulting in about 3,600 images to assess. Bones were assessed by determining if there were any striations, notches, abrasions, edge rounding or grooves. Results after butchery shows notches or percussion marks, grooves and striations. It also created cross-hatched striations towards the distal ends of the flake. Grooves and striations were categorised as either U or V-shaped, and either straight, curved or sinuous. Results after cutting displayed distal abrasion on 87.5% of specimens, and edge rounding on 42.5%, 70.6% of which were distal. Here is an example of the edge rounding created when the flakes were used to cut meat. The red dot is placed on the same point of the flake before and after cutting. The line is used to indicate the rounding of the edge. To my surprise, no striations were found after scraping. Perhaps if a higher resolution microscope had been used, it would have yielded different results. 5% of the flakes showed evidence of abrasion but 87.5% of bone flakes used for scraping showed edged rounding, 84.2 of which were distal. Trampling results. Trampling within the beach sand sediment displayed abrasion on 86.6% of specimens. A third of the specimens displayed edge rounding that was distal. 
The most interesting result from the beach sand was the high abrasion that started to remove a deep percussion mark that occurred during butchery. Trampling in the coarse sand or river sand sediment showed distal abrasion on 6.6% of specimens and edge rounding on 20% of specimens. The circles here show the removal of a section of bone worn down through abrasion, whilst the curved line shows edge rounding as the U-shaped notch becomes flatter after trampling. Trampling within the gravel sediment displayed the most variety of categories, including abrasion, edge rounding, distal striations, and both medial and distal grooves via trampling. Clay sediment showed the least amount of change before and after trampling, likely due to the compaction of the soil. The arrow here, however, indicates a notch in one of the specimens, above which you can see the removal of a large fragment of bone. The discussion refers back to the initial research questions posed. What are the effects of trampling on bone flakes? This depends on the sediment type, but the most common markings across all sediments include abrasion across the entire surface, as well as distal edge rounding. Abrasion can also cause the removal of anthropogenic modifications. Does trampling of bone flakes create the same patterns found on flakes that have been retouched? According to this experiment, no. But these findings contradict other findings from previous research and experiments done by others. Does trampling create similar patterns on bone flakes that have been utilised? Yes. Trampled and utilised flakes both have edge rounding and abrasion. There is a difference though, as trampled flakes have abrasion across the entire surface, while utilised bone display abrasion along the utilised edges. So what does this mean for archaeology? This experiment shows that striations and grooves are likely to be the result of butchery rather than trampling or utilisation, and that notches are inconclusive as a diagnostic criterion when separating anthropogenic and trampling modifications. It also shows that bone flakes that were utilised or the result of butchery can be misidentified as unmarked bone, especially in fine sediments due to the extent of abrasion. This experiment also shows the need for reanalysis of sites where bone flakes display distal edge rounding, as this is likely a result of utilisation rather than trampling modifications. Thank you for your attention and participation in this presentation. Jerome Reynard is funded by a South African Department of Science and Technology and the National Research Foundation.